So I want to keep this session very interactive as well. And I know many of you have a lot to say and you're all very smart. So uh, please, uh, you know, shoot us your questions. Even if it's a little bit personal, I think we're all we're okay to share that in this very safe space uh, today. So I don't want it to be too formal. Uh, let's have a chat. And for those who don't know, Trisha and I are actually childhood friends and I'm very proud about that as well. Uh, we went to the same primary school. Uh, so much yeah, about about some of your ages, I think. Yeah, when we were friends, um, we used to hang out every evening um, together. So, Trisha, I'm going to let you um, say a few things uh, and welcome you on board to this session today. Okay, hi everyone. Good afternoon, and it's so great to be here. Um, I have been here. Uh, in fact, I used to be part of the very very original team of people who set up Ideas Academy. Uh, I haven't been back for many years. It's great to be back. I think I was in this very space where some of your former friends and colleagues put together a Christmas performance, but it's been many years since I've been back. So uh, it's so nice to see all of you. I wish I could see all of you like with your masks off, um, but it's still great to be here. And um, do we need a mask on? No, right? I think it's okay for us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, just to say that thank you to Stephanie and the Ideas Academy team for inviting us here. Um, as Jesse said, the both of us go back a really long way. We knew each other since we were 10. Um, we went to the same primary school, so we played basketball together, we cycled together, and we've kept in touch all these years. So um, it's nice to be together in a working environment as well um so do i introduce myself or what, what do i what do i say now well i wanted to start with uh perhaps giving us an idea of what uh ideas uh, does but uh, yes more than happy for you to uh, introduce a little bit about yourself okay um so i am malaysian i've lived in malaysia uh, most of my life i what do i say about myself actually i come from a uh, Typical Malaysian family. Um, I am an only child from my parents, but I also come from a broken family. So I think that's something you know interesting to share. Um, my parents split up when I was very young, so I have a lot of you know half brothers and sisters, step brothers and sisters. Um, so I didn't actually grow up in a very stable uh, family and a household. Um, and I think I can, you know, talk to you about some of those challenges along the way. But um, I was lucky enough to have a close relationship with my family. And, uh, you know, I had a, a church community that I belonged to. So that helped as well along the way. Um, I studied locally. I did my degree at Monash University in Sunway here. And then I did my master's in the UK and I just completed my PhD like in 2020 last year. Uh, I've been working in this field called public policy in a think tank for many, many years. Um, and we do a lot of research. In fact, we actually just published a paper on the impact of COVID-19 on refugee children and the impact of healthcare and education access um, over the pandemic years. So policy work sounds really boring, but actually it's really exciting. It's, it's really exciting and interesting because it allows us to tackle the most difficult problems any country is facing. Um, just today, actually, like just this morning, in the office, I was interviewed by Channel News Asia for a documentary that they're doing on refugees in Malaysia. And they asked me about, you know, what is Malaysia's direction? What is the new government going to do? Why is there this trend of this rumored shutting down of UNHCR? So those are things that I can do because we are independent and I can have that voice to speak out against things that we don't agree with in the government. So I'll there for now. But that is a, um, a, a really unique 
place to be in because you're able to fight the fight um, based on facts and, and research. And before we get into that part, uh, perhaps uh, you could indulge us a little bit of what you told uh, CNA this, this morning. Um, that is quite current. I'm sure everyone's also wondering, what is the direction uh, we're going? Because the government is really brand new at this point. So are you picking up on any positive? Tips? Yeah, so I think the government is really too new for us to be able to tell for sure. Um, the Home Ministry is the one that makes all the decisions, right? So the Home Minister is also new. We don't know. We haven't heard anything like any major policy announcements from them yet. But one interesting thing is that when Ideas did a research report uh, in 2019, which pushed for granting refugees the right to work, so formally recognizing and officially granting refugees the right to work, um, at that time, he was opposition leader and now he's prime minister, right? So Anwar Ibrahim, he was there at the launch of that paper. So he's very aware of the facts and I think he, we just sent him the copy of the paper again. <laughs> like, just like, hey, just remember, this is something that we did, you know, before. And you were there at the launch, you attended it. So uh, we hope to use this opportunity again um, to hopefully pressure the new government to come up with what is their position, what's their policy stand on things. Um, is it looking hopeful? Uh, are we on a, a, a better track than we have been previously? I don't mean to make this sort of, yeah. you know, quite uh, dark in that sense, but it's, it's a really good uh, a way of trying to navigate 2023 to know where we yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and if you want to talk about public policy, like this is it as well, right? So what is the government's policy position on, you know, granting refugees the right to work, or actually recognizing UNHCR, and if they want to shut it down, what are their alternative plans? Um, so I think at the, it still is quite challenging because the past few years have really seen uh, uh, the kind of scaling up in... For some reason, the local authorities and agencies clamping down even more. And I think, so this is what I said as well to CNA this morning, that it's partly got to do with the local domestic politics. So any country in deciding on what to do has to deal with the political situation locally. Which is where I want to jump yeah. in as well. Um, our audience today, all these wonderful individuals, besides having a label, are just kids as well and always subjected to what's happening externally. What, what do you feel about that? I think it's unfortunate. I think um, we all are subject to what's happening in the political landscape as well as external factors. Some of these things are out of our control. So I think sometimes it can just feel like we are just subjects or victims of a system, right? Like the system is just too big and it's really out of our control. And I think that's where it can lead to this feeling of helplessness and hopelessness. Um, but that's where that's not true as well. Absolutely. There are opportunities and there are ways around this sense of hopelessness. We just need to be just need to have a plan, just need to have a strategy in place and know who it is that we need to target within government. And so we have this thing in ideas, like we call it the theory of change, right? So we, I always push my team members like, okay, you say you want to improve things in this area, whatever it is. It could be about refugee rights, it could be about education, it could be about anything. Uh, you know, name me something that you care about. Uh, environment, climate change, energy transition. So what is your theory of change? And how are you going to get to the point at which some kind of change will happen? Yeah, yeah so the planning is really important. And it, I mean, the big things in the world will never happen if you don't have a plan. Right. So it, it comes down to the boring, like, baby details. Yes, yeah. that's right. But that is where the magic is. And, and all of you have that potential to bring about that change, not just for yourself, but starting with yourself and for your loved ones and for the greater good, um, if you have. So here's a life hack. It is a life hack. Social media is your weapon. Social media is your tool. 
and so is research. And I wanted to come to that because a lot of times, um, you know, we might look at research as being analytically quite boring or a dry subject, but it is really magical. In fact, some people say it's quite sexy in that sense. Um, so tell us a little bit about research and, and, and why um, getting involved in this area of work perhaps is a great start for bringing about worldly global change. Like you said, it's got to start somewhere. I think sometimes research has this like, you know, people who work in research tend to have this label of being nerds or, you know, like policy wonks. It, I mean, we make fun of ourselves that way as well, right? Like, you know, we all wear glasses or whatever. Um, but I think all of us do research for whatever reasons. If you are going to buy a new phone, if you're going to buy a new, I don't know, outfit for you to go out, movie research, celebrities, movies, yeah, yeah we'll celebrities, like you, you do research all the time. Yeah. It's just that you don't log it as research in your head. Uh, but we're all collecting data and, you know, the companies are also collecting your data. But, <laughs> but I mean, my point is that research is constantly happening, right? And... Um, what all we're doing is just translating all the data and the research that we can find out there, putting it into a format that has a purpose. So we call that like a policy paper or a white paper or what you know report. And all that does is to give you a document. It's like your it's like your power tool, right? It opens the doors for you to call on something to happen. Um, I don't know. Think about. A famous activist that you know. Uh, anyone can name me a famous activist or a a any kind of big activist personality that I know. Everyone can think of. Everyone has something to say here, so <laughs> I am going to get into everyone's head a little bit. But yes, anyone want to share? Uh, maybe a role model that you have, or an activist that you follow, or or something, a subject that's close to heart. Girls, come on, girls. We got. I'll do the boys here. No, I'm kidding. Anyone? No? Just shout out her name if yeah. you can think of someone. Yeah. Okay, and what does he advocate? Well, what does he stand for? Like, He's talking about climate change, right? Yeah, yes. so climate change, right? So um, he, did, he made a documentary. And um, documentaries need research. So the research, the research is the starting point, but the documentary is just the the public tool that you use to share it to the rest of the world, but it has to start from somewhere. Um, yeah, so that, that's a great example on climate change. And, you know, somebody else would be maybe Greta Thunberg, right? Also on the issue of climate change. She knows her stats and she's so young and she is able to cite these things off the top of her head. So that's just what we do. We, we do the research. Uh, sometimes it's primary research. Primary research is when you collect survey data and you go and interview people and you collect that. Uh, or you do focus group discussions. Or we have like town hall meetings like this and you know, we ask you questions. So then the research is analyzed into a report and then that is what we use to go out and call for some kind of change from the policy makers. And yeah. that is ideas, essentially, um, and that's who you are backed by, and they do the good work. Um, and so hopefully, uh, you know, some of you may pick up on that as well, because research, research is going to be part of our lives in your uh, education and in your university and in your master's and your PhD, very much research-based. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's good to get uh, sort of uh, um, affiliated or, or, or start to love the concept of, of that research and, and facts. It's a information overload right now uh, you know with a uh, chat gpt who knows chat gpt guys chat gpt go home look it up chat gpt it's an ai portal look it up now yeah 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 look all of you are connected but don't um, use it for your assignments <laughs> okay so you know that right okay yeah um uh, teachers just your yeah, heads up here okay uh, but it is such a wonderful tool um, to to garner in, in information and, and to know in what aspect the, the movement of information, big data and, and AI is. So, so that's an interesting thing um, to share there. Uh, but Trish, back to you. Uh, what kind of changes do you think 
um, Malaysia needs. I mean, we talk about, uh, you know, government and we talk about policies and, and everything, but essentially um, at the grassroots level, on an everyday life level, um, as a country and, and all our kids here as well are within this country and part of the country as well. What are some of the changes you think that really needs to happen? And if anyone has an idea or suggestion or, or, or something, a point you'd like to share, please just put up your hand and, and let's let's hear it from you as well. Yeah, where do I start, right? There's just so many problems, I think, that the country is faced with. Um, I think for one, we have a really big urban-rural divide. So we are all here in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, we have access to basic water and health and electricity and so on. But you don't need to go very far. Like You don't even need to go to Sabah and Sarawak in the east of Malaysia. Um, it's actually sometimes in Selangor itself, some of the schools I've seen. And I think you're all really privileged to be here in Ideas Academy, where you get good um, education. Some of the schools, even within Selangor State, are in appalling conditions. There's rubbish everywhere. So I think the rural access to even basic um, water, sanitation, electricity, it's, it's actually quite ridiculous if you think about it. Like We are operating in the year 2023 and Malaysia is supposed to be on the upper end of a developing country. So that's one. I think second is actually education as well. So the education um, deficiencies that we have are really challenging because we were just talking about it before coming here. You have very, very expensive international and private schools, which people like me can't afford. And then you have the national schools where the quality is so low. And even though we have a very high literacy rate, most Malaysians can read and write and speak, um, but the quality, the, the kind of critical questions and challenging um, mindset that, they require, that we require to work in this new era of work, I think that's not present among, among our children and that's going to be a challenge for our future. So that's just two things off the top of my head. There's so many other things. I mean, linked to the poverty issue, uh, we have something called Orang Asli, which is the indigenous community. I don't know whether any of you have met um, Orang Asli. That's, have, have any of you yeah, met? Have you, any, any of you met? Native, like native, yeah. native indigenous people, right? So they are struggling. They are, they're poor. Um, again, no access to education because the schools are really far away. Uh, we also did some research on this Orang Asli education and sometimes it requires them, you know, eight hours to travel to school. So by the time they reach school, the school is already closing. So how do they actually get to get to class? Um, so just a lot of these like disparities that continue to exist. And I'm not even talking about things like corruption, uh, grand corruption, you know, major, major scandals, which... You read in the news. Yeah. <laughs> so it is, it is a crazy world um, and, and it is the crazy world we live in. But I think what's wonderful is that we get to do or get to form our own worlds and create our own orbits. Um, and that's where you can really be empowered with a topic that is close to your heart or perhaps a certain thing that, has, that you've been through in, in your life that you want to advocate about, um, mental health, for example. And I think, you know, we always talk about I, I look at all of you and, and, I, and I, then I look at you and I'm like, we were just their age. Uh, but at that time, we had no, inst I sound like an auntie now, but it's true. We had no Instagram, we had no uh, Facebook, That obviously no TikTok, nothing like it. Um, but fast forward 20 years on, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's your world. It's, it's, it's something that's so part of your everyday life, uh, which has also become something we're so used to. So I can't even imagine a world without it. What I'm saying is you have this wonderful weapon in your hand. And if you have ideas, if you have things to say, be heard. Put it out there. Um, you don't have to be 100% right. You don't have to be, and you, you may never be wrong. But sharing that, you never know who you're going to inspire. And so we talk about education. Now, one of the biggest part of education I feel that is really missed out is this idea or concept of self-expression and presentation. 
and speaking up here and, and sharing your thoughts and, and, and really standing for something, being an activist. And I think from climate change to environment to children's rights, there's so many things that work on a peer-to-peer -peer basis. You are in a great place to talk and share because you've walked the walk. You have that experience. Um, and, and so, you know, the world is really uh, your, your oyster. And what we want to really share with you today is that how Trisha has shaped her life and how I have gone through the journey in my life, you too have that and it's potential waiting for you to happen. And you're this wonderful, great age to do it. Uh, you can really shape your future. And although many of you are really sleepy right now and you're like, I need Milo, um, <laughs> uh, just hear us out because we really want to share, uh, you know, some of uh, our, our life uh, journey and experiences. So Trish, you shared with us a little bit about your childhood um, and, and, you know, from where you were to where you are, it, obviously has had some challenges as well. Were there times when you thought, oh my God, what am I doing? Or this is really not my thing. Um, am I doing the right thing? Where you have, have had doubt? Yeah, of course, all the time, right? Um, I think everyone has, there, there's this thing, I'm sure you've heard of this term called imposter syndrome. I don't know what it is, look it up. Um, it's where you don't, believe that you're actually as good as you should be and you think that people are judging you based actually, on that you are pretty but good actually you are yeah and i think um i'm not sure but i i think women tend to have that um uh, more than men i mean not that men don't get it but men have a probably healthier sense of ego <laughs> sometimes uh, which is good so keep keep that going keep that going but I think for women especially, um, there's a lot of self-doubt. And I think maybe we should just encourage, especially younger women, to step up and to make sure that, you know, they get, like you get the opportunities. And when there are chances to speak up about things that you're not happy with, um, that doesn't sit right with your conscience, like be aware that the table is there and you have a space at the table, right? To be able to speak out. Uh, I'm trying to think of a specific incident to share on my own journey. Um, well, I don't know. I think, the, I guess the most recent is during my PhD. So I took leave from my work. So basically I wasn't earning any money for three years uh, doing a PhD, which is, which was actually, on hindsight, a terrible idea because I was also pregnant at the time. Uh, having, bringing a, a small child into the world without getting any income. And then I was just, you know, okay, let's just go for it. You know, I can do it. You know, I'm going to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I'm quite a high achieving kind of person. And Always, throughout <laughs> school. <laughs> but um, what happened was I failed my proposal defense. So you have to write a proposal and then you... you share it among, well, you, you present it and then you get it passed so that you can move on to the next step. So I failed it and I was, you know, a first time mom, um, not receiving any money. I failed my proposal defense and I was really at like an all time low and I was just like, you know, why am I doing this? I should just go back into the working world and, um, you know, the PhD was a bad idea. I, I, I can't do it, you know. And also, when you study and the PhD is supposed to be like the peak of academia, right, when you do research. And um, the, the PhD process is very, very cutting. Like, it can really lower your morale down because the whole point of it is for your supervisors to tell you, no, 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 it's bad stuff. Like, submit something better, submit something better. Um, but eventually, yeah, I, I spoke to people and I went for like a kind of workshop retreat in Penang and I spoke to others. So it managed to pick me up, but that was a low point. Um, and just, you know, ready to give it up as well. I think that's a great point that you brought up uh, about voicing out and sharing to know that you're never alone on a journey, however difficult it may seem or however cast out you may seem there's always someone who's willing to listen and someone who can understand um yeah and, and community is really important and really powerful because 
It's only when you identify others who are in the same boat as you, going through the same journey, that that makes all the difference. Just to know that you're not alone in it, that you're not the only one that yeah. has gone through that thing. Which doesn't make it any yeah. easier. We're not saying that, you yeah. know, it's, it's easy. It's never easy. Everyone's journey is, is hard. But to know that there are others and many others, however fortunate or unfortunate uh, background that they may have or, or they may come from. Guys, I, I don't want to lose you, but I just want to go around here. Could we have an extra mic to pass to, to our audience? No? Okay, so then I'll just share my mic. Guys, I want to know, is there any particular topic that is, you know, that is close to your heart? Any, uh, any issue that, that, that you would like to advocate about or speak up about or you think that is not being spoken or shared enough within your classes and your circles. Okay, let's start with this. Who's on TikTok? Okay, one hand. Okay, two hands. I see the hands slowly. Guys, you don't, you don't do TikTok? No? You guys, are, are you into games? Do you, do you play online games? Yeah, kinda, kinda. <laughs> is, is there something that you, that you, you care about or like, is there something that has, you know, crossed your path in the course of your studies or like in your family or anything, anything, right? Something that, that you're like, oh, this is important, but, or something that you've, that surprised you when you read something online. Okay, Raj, I'm going to call you out because you're there and I, and I know your name. Maybe you to share with us a little bit about something that you'd like to advocate about or hear more about that's, that needs to be shared. I think you have a loud enough voice or do you need the mic? Let's give a round of applause. That's right. Yes. <laughs> come, come, come to the front. Come to the front so we can get you on video as well. All right. There you go. Okay. Um, so, as you talked about TikTok, so I'll... Uh, share something about uh, what I have seen in social media. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so when I started using Twitter, it was actually because I was learning a new language and I connected with the community there. So it was like at the start, it was very nice, but then I started uh, getting trolled a lot. <laughs> yeah. So actually, I was learning uh, a Sanskrit language. It's more it's like related to the Hinduism religion, and I'm Muslim. I'm Muslim, so it was like in in the start, I was it was very well welcoming, but in as I moved along, I started like getting trolls that he has an hidden agenda in learning the language and all that. So it's like I think it's like we are very scared of the things that we don't know, and we drown try to learn from the person uh, directly when we are learning about them. We learn from a biased source usually, and that uh, in increases our ignorance in a way. So if we are learning about something different, or we found, about, uh, found out something about a person, and um, we didn't understand it, I think we should go directly to the person or the community and get knowledge from them. For example, I myself am a refugee to here. And I see a lot of stereotypes here in Malaysia about that. But no one goes and asks them directly. They're available here. You can come and ask them. Uh, ask them. So this is something I feel very strongly about. Thank you. Thank you so much. So important that you brought up this in this age of information and, and TMI, right? Too much info. Um, information bias and a, a, a bias source which requires then research, right? Yeah, um, I mean, it's so interesting because, you know, a decade ago, everyone was interested in terrorism, right? That was like the big topic of the day. And today, the big topic is misinformation or disinformation, fake news, right? So we are actually doing some research projects now on this precise topic on misinformation and disinformation because it's so easy to spread fake news on social media. There are like these deep fakes as well, um, where the videos look as if they're real because people are talking, but actually they're not. 
So that's where the, the, the Tom Cruise one is quite famous. Oh, I didn't see the Tom Cruise have one. Have you seen it? It's crazy, right? It really looks like Tom Cruise, but obviously it's not. Yeah. Him. So yeah. They, they can just take whatever video of us speaking now, and they would put the words in that I could be speaking about something completely different and completely off. Uh, so that's dangerous, right? It's dangerous for democracy. It's dangerous for human rights um, when these individual rights are taken away from you. Uh, so yeah, the research project we're doing is to actually look at what's happening on social media and um, develop some kind of game that we can spread on how do you counter these fake news. But I think um, someone here had, I think you wanted to say something? Um, can everyone hear me? Yeah. Okay. So I I know I'm going to a so different matter, uh, but it's about motivation. Um, two years ago, I got a skin condition called vitiligo, and as a teenage girl, of course, it it is a big deal for me to deal with a kind of skin condition, and I stopped going out. I stopped talking to my family. I went to a, you know, I went to a, like, a depression because it, it gets, like, white spots on your face, which turns you in a different look. And I, I told my parents that I'm going to stop school because I don't want to go to school. And then, um, sorry, I guess it's emotional. Oh my god, I'm still so nervous. Yeah, and then I took, it was luckily on the COVID-19 time, which the school offers were online. I, I was very happy. Okay, now I can be in the house, I'm safe. But then the school opens and I was totally no. I'm not, I'm gonna stop school, I'm not gonna go to school. But then my father, the best man in the world, has healed me. He has always said that you are the best and you need to believe this. It doesn't matter how you look, it matters how you like express yourself to the world. So then I tried, but I never uh, put my mask off whenever I go out because I still shy, like, you know, people will see me and judge me. And then, yeah, the man is like my father. He has always supported me. He always uh, motivate me, which is why I'm standing here. And I, I motivate everyone also, like whatever you're facing, just go through, just work, just, I'm like, live your life. You never know what's going to happen in your future. And yes, thankful to all my friends because they never judge me. They always love me and they always hear me as the same as I am. Thank you. Wonderful. You're so brave. Thank you so much for sharing, guys. I think that really deserves another round of applause. What's your name again? Ina. Ina? Ina, okay. Ina is... Hina. Okay, Hina. Hina is um, definitely the star of the show today. I know we have many other stars here as well, but um, you are uh, bright. You're shining bright like a diamond and continue doing what you do. Inspiring others while helping yourself. You know, those tears mean a lot. And I think we've all been there at different points of our lives. And for you to come up here and share that and make that the normal is so, so important. Because while we are learning and scoring in exams and everything, we're still human beings and we still have needs and we, we, we want to be loved and we want to be seen and we want to be heard. And, and that's just very human. And the, the day we start to recognize that and normalize that um, is, is the day that I think we can all really, uh, a word I like to do, use bloom into ourselves, you know, and who we really are. And that's how we started today talking about, thank you so much, Hina, about 
the, the potential that all of you have. And, you know, there could be so many topics um, and issues that are close to your heart. And what we want to do today is really let you know that you can shape your world. You are a change maker. Hina today changed the whole energy here that's in this room. And she spoke about mental health. So important. I think uh, uh, the teachers are, are very, very impressed as, as well. Okay, guys, I want to hear from one more person, please, before we continue our, our talk. Or maybe we'll just ditch the talk, Trisha, because um, the kids are so much more, uh, you know, has so much to share. Is there anyone? I want to hear from uh, one of the girls right now uh, or, or, or one of the guys, maybe, since Hina just spoke. Um, I, I'm eyeing these three guys here because they're very animated. There's something happening. Which who's the talkative one here? Who's the talkative one, guys? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Here yeah, you. You're the lucky one. Come on. Come on. Let's go. If not, all three are coming. <laughs> come on. Are you doing rock, paper, stone, rock, paper, scissors? <laughs> come on. Oh, uh, Jesse, there's, a, there's someone at the back as well. Oh, yes. All right. Great. Yeah. Come. Come, come. Round of applause. <laughs> okay, this is Esther. Hi, Esther. Okay, tell us. Uh, okay. Um... I just wanted I just wanted to ask something like as a great as a great woman yourself, I'm sure like being activists um activist and uh, voicing out the problems in Malaysia, like I just wanna ask like I'm sure you have received uh backlashes and all those criticisms and I, I was wondering like uh voicing out and being such uh doing such uh important uh, stuff uh it I'm sure there's there's like there are like the pros and the pros and the con the cons and I was wondering like how do you deal with them like every day? Okay, that's a great question. Um, I think well, actually, it's related to what we were saying earlier about mental health being important. So first, it's really important that um, I have to focus on myself and how I manage my own stress. And I just said this to my team like yesterday uh, because we had a happy new year, you know, first staff meeting and everything. And I said, you know, the most important thing, the most important contribution that we can actually make to the world is actually first to start with ourselves. Because if we cannot manage our own stress and our own bodies and our own minds, then everything else doesn't mean anything. Because I have to be a good boss. I have 25 staff under me. I have to be a good um, steward of my own mind. So that's where mental health comes in. And taking care of myself is really important. I think that's really important for all of you as well. While you're contributing to the world, you have to take care of yourself first. Um, and then everything else flows from there. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Um, but like, you know, challenges of like people saying things about you, um, I actually haven't got that very much at Ideas, but previously I used to work for the Chief Minister of Selangor, and um, I was the only Chinese person working in a very, very Malay environment. So I think you all are familiar with the ethnicities in Malaysia. And uh, I remember there was like this booklet that was printed anonymously, so nobody knew who wrote it or anything, but one of the things, one of the criticisms against my boss, the chief minister, was that he hired a Chinese lady to work with him who has access to, you know, state secrets or whatever. Um, so, you know, to his defense, he was really good and he never said anything about it. But those are the kinds of very racial, like personal targeting that you would get. Um, as long as I said something externally, which is critical, then it will start to come back. Oh, you're a Chinese lady, you're young. What do you know about it? So what, how do you respond to those things? I think as long as your conscience is clear, you know that you're doing the right thing. Um, I just let my daughter watch Frozen 2 recently. <laughs> yeah, sorry, bad analogy, but there's a song in that, in that film, which I was like, oh, yeah, that, that's actually pretty good, which is um, what, what the, the younger sister, Anna, is like in the depression mode. And all she can think of is like, okay, I'm going to do the next right thing. 
I'm just going to do the next right thing. And I thought, yeah, okay, that's pretty good advice. Um, when you have nothing else and in your hands anymore and you're at the at rock bottom, that's all you can do. Your conscience is clear. You've done the work the best to your ability. You have nothing to hide. You have nothing um, wrong that you've done. So if criticisms come, just focus on doing the right thing and you'll be fine. Yeah, so that's how I would deal with it. Uh, like, I'm, I'm sure you have like been uh, through a lot like since your childhood and stuff, like, you, but you've grown up to be very positive and, uh, like, and, and inspire to many people. And we're very grateful to have you guys here. <laughs> Thank okay. you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the question. Thank you, Esther. Woohoo! President there setting um, a very good example. Uh, and you know that, uh, and now we know as well, Trisha, that uh, our kids here are really vocal and they have a lot to share. Um, the floor is still open. We want to hear from you. Is there any other topics that you want to talk about or you want to, questions you want to ask Trisha about? Because while you think about that, Trisha, I want to ask you, you know, your whole life, of course, you have been an achiever and, and you continue to do that even today. But what if one of us is not really academically inclined and our interest lies outside the classroom? How, how do we deal with that? Yeah, I mean, absolutely, right? I think many countries actually allow for alternative vocations and not everyone's going to do a PhD, right? Everyone can choose their own paths. And honestly, the world today has all the options available. I think in the past, our parents would say like, okay, you go study medicine or engineering or law and that's about it. Uh, there were no other alternatives. But today, there are all kinds of options, jobs that never existed before, right? Content creation, uh, influencers. I'm not saying, you know, that should be the, the vocation. Oh yeah, but I, I want to say something. I remember when I was 17 or 18 and I attended a talk, um, the speaker said something that stays to me to, with me till today. He said, don't look for a job, look for a vocation. And I was like, okay, what's the difference between a job and vocation, right? So I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but a job can just be a job. Many people just have jobs. You go to work, you come back, maybe you feel satisfied, but maybe you don't. But a vocation is something that really is something that inspires you and it's aligned with something that you feel passionately about. So it has nothing to do with academia at all. Like you don't have to. I mean, of course, please still study. <laughs> but uh, what I'm saying is that vocation can be anything. The world is your oyster. You can, I don't know, be a... A, a professional scuba diver, um, a you can be a, um, yeah, uh, a, a documentary maker. I mean, yeah. I, I made a documentary as well before I got into where I currently am. Um, you can look it up. It's called The Rights of the Dead. A very dark name. <laughs> but it was, a, it was based on a true story of something that happened in, in the state government. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, my point is that there are just so many options available, especially in today's yeah, world. Yeah. yeah. It's a really lucky era to be in. And I want to talk about, you know, we talked about information and that overload and, 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 and studying and all of that. But again, I, I remember even as a kid, you used to read a lot. You loved reading and I would take like a month to finish one book and you'll be done <laughs> in a week or so. I think I borrowed a book from the library and I just never returned it. Um, but I want to talk about how that is such an asset to have, that the pen is truly mightier than the sword. And, and if you have a cause or, or something you want to talk about or something you feel deeply about or angry about, take to writing, take to reading, because there is, again, I use that word magic in there, more so in this day and age. Yeah, I mean, the ability to write. It's, it's not just the ability to write, actually. What we need today are people who can express themselves well and communicate the point that you want to make. So it can be done through writing, it can be done through speaking, but the point is, can you translate what's in your head on paper or in a way that somebody else is going to understand it? And that's actually something I find even lacking in my own staff, right? But that's where the power of books does come in because 
how you learn how to communicate is through reading a lot, is through absorbing those words. I mean, I have a love for words and, um, you know, probably English is not the first language for many of us, even in Malaysia, because we all also have our own uh, languages, you know, Chinese and so on. Um, although I don't actually speak Chinese, <laughs> so I'm not a good example. Uh, but my point is that, can you fall in love with words? Because that's what will take you really far when you try to communicate with other people. Yeah, and the impact of that. Is anyone? Yeah, that's great. Round of applause. So motivating. So inspiring, guys. Okay, I'm going to come around with the mic and, and another lucky person. Does anybody want to volunteer to share something? Ladies here are looking away or looking down. Okay, Hina, can you can you nominate somebody? Because I don't have oh yeah, someone over I there. See you. Sure. Um, you believe that you believe that social media is a place to voice out, right? But don't you feel that when so many people voice about one particular topic, instead of making things better, we just ended up making things worse. And during that particular time, when so many people try to voice about one thing. Anyhow, we are also taking people's family into anxiety or putting them into anxiety consternation and putting them a lot of mental stress. So what do you think about it? Should we really voice out about a thing or should we not? Because I feel that when we try to voice out, things are just jumbling up a lot. We're just making things mess. It's not really a right way to, you know, to put up a point across on social media. You mean that's oh, sorry. <laughs> you, you mean that, that there's like... Too much noise. Too much noise, too yeah, much noise in the social media space. Yeah. What do you think about that? I think that's a, that's a great point. And I talked about TMI earlier. And we talked about information bias and source bias. Uh, but it goes back to your purpose and your passion. And if that is a route or a direction you choose to express, you can do it via art. You can do it singing. You can put out sorry, social media content and not have to voice out. But you can express it in a in a very different way for a particular issue if, if you want to. There's poetry and there's this and that. But there is an information overload. It is a mess out there. But when you speak from the heart and you speak from something that is totally based on your experience, I don't ever, I believe that it will not be misleading. It will be impactful to someone somewhere. It will inspire um, some, some person. And I, I think I, I would leave it at that, Trish. Um, I, I, I like what you say, actually, because uh, I've also read about how, like, if we spend excessive time on social media, that can be bad for our mental health. If you spend too much time on Instagram, I mean, Instagram particularly because, um, actually, sorry to be, like, very research-minded. Well, I, I am a researcher. So the research shows <laughs> that um, girls are more susceptible to negative emotions from Instagram than boys because girls tend to look at Instagram and compare ourselves with each other. So I think there is something to be said there that, you know, be careful as well when you go on social media not to spend like excessive time or rather you are, you are in control about what content you read and you are exposed to. Um, if you're if you're going to be looking for content that's that's educational, that's great. But be aware that all these companies as well, th there's an algorithm there that is created to feed you with content that makes you compare yourselves to others. So being aware of what Facebook does, what Twitter does, what Instagram does, what TikTok does, I think that can be quite dangerous. So be aware of. Yeah, the filtration yeah. process needs to happen. Absolutely that. And also it's great that you don't have to follow the herd. You can stand up and say, hey, look, it's too much information. It's bothering me. It's bothering my family members. It's opinion bias and so on and so forth. And, and maybe that's something that you want to stand up about and, and fight against, you know, that, that guys, you know, and putting out is, is, if not accurate, we are in the time of misinformation and disinformation. That's a daily battle with what Raj shared as well. So, so yeah, again, maybe that's a good starting point if that is your journey and if that is the way you want to express. I think what I uh, am trying to drive home is that 
there are platforms for you to be seen and to be heard and to be advocates. You don't have to go out there and be like Greta Thunberg and, and, and fight, but, you know, don't keep it inside. We are in an age where there's a lot happening around us and internally as well. And it's really great to share, even if it's within your family, within your circle of friends, or even on a social media platform, if you so choose to. But the arts and crafts, and there are many in sports. There's so many other ways as well. Yeah, I mean, social media has this, like, it's so vilified because of all the negative things it brings. Um, but you just think about it like a tool, right? It's a platform. Social media is a platform. You make of it what you want. The more you look for something, the more the algorithm is going to feed you with something. If you are going to be looking at only videos of cats every day, then your whole feed will be videos of cats every day. Maybe that makes you happy, but is it also challenging your mind? Is it making you expand beyond what you know? So it can be a good thing. It can be a bad thing. It's really up to you. Yeah. Would you like to say something? No? Yeah? No? Nothing at all? <laughs> okay, anyone else? Guys? You over there at the corner, yeah? And you're very sleepy, I know. Maybe you want to share something. What kept you up all night yesterday? Yes? Well, I think uh, I, I have a question here. You know, we talk about uh, empowerment and finding the passion and finding a reason of being and all that. But what if I don't know what I like or what my purpose is or what my passion is? Where do I start? Then I think just expose yourself to whatever you can, right? Um, do the next right thing. <laughs> yeah, do the next right thing or... Or just, yeah, expose yourself to different kinds of activities, different kinds of issues. Um, but I think, yeah, reading is also is still really important. Uh, does, this, does anyone here, like, I don't know, read the news? Just curious. Yeah? Okay. Well, what, what do you like about reading the news? Yeah, sure. Just shout it out. Oh, you, you like to read what's happening in Malaysia. Okay, that, that's really good. Yeah. <laughs> how, how about you, um, gentlemen? Yeah. Yeah, and every single thing that you read, like, points back to something, right? Russia's invasion of Ukraine, it's like infringement of international human rights law. Um, landslide happening, it's some kind of environmental policy that wasn't adhered to. Like, who was in the wrong? Um, are we going to get even more landslides? And lives were actually lost. So I think that, you know, that, that would be like a great starting point. I mean, when I was young, I never read Malaysian news. I wasn't interested in Malaysia, which is ironic because I'm working on it now. But I just love international news. I would only read international news. I, I loved what was happening around the world, reading about the wars and all that. Um, yeah, just start from somewhere. Or something about your own home countries, right? Maybe that's something that interests you as well. What's happening back home? Um, is that something that comes out in the news? Yeah. There's this great movie on uh, Netflix, uh, Swimmers. Has anyone watched it? Oh, go home. And you've watched it? Great, right? I was glued to the TV. It's an amazing movie. Uh, maybe you want to watch that. I think we have uh, sort of crossed that, that time on, on the clock. Do we have more time? Uh, Trisha, I wanted to... Does anyone else have anything to, to add on to our conversation today? Okay, great. Maybe before we, we, we close the session for today, um, you could share with us what are the kinds of topics that you would like to have speakers come and share and talk about? Huh? What? You said something. You said something. Okay, no? Anyone? Any suggestions? Okay, you can bring it up to Esther. Okay? <laughs> if you have suggestions, we're more than happy. Now, we talk about, uh, again, uh, you know, finding something outside and this and that. But uh, w what about celebrating who we are and our achievements so far and just being happy in, in what we do? And um, that, and also another question I want to add before uh, wrapping up today is, 
the spirit of volunteering. Uh, Ideas has a lot of volunteers as well, a lot of do-gooders, a lot of good Samaritans that are behind the scenes as well. Maybe joining organizations or movements or, or clubs is a great way to find purpose and, and meaning um, that, that would stick with you for the rest of your life. Yeah, so I think this is the time of your life because you're young and, you know, you don't have to think about your children <laughs> running yeah. around, yeah. pulling on your legs. <laughs> so take full advantage of the fact that you have your youth. And yeah, like I said, do lots and lots of different things. Um, it can be carpentry, it can be knitting, it can be public speaking, um, it can be on beauty, on, you know, I don't know, Islam and democracy or something like that, right? Like anything at all that piques your interest, um, do it while you're young because once you get married, once you have children, we know what that's like. <laughs> uh, you won't have the time, you won't have the head space for it anymore. Yeah, so do what you can while you can. And yeah, celebrate, celebrate yourselves for who you are. That's right, exactly. And today I want uh, you to give yourself a round of applause. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. And we want to share with you that you are making an impact in the world with your sharing, with being who you are, with your learning and your growing. And we hope that you continue to make that difference, however big or small, and that you go home today or, or reach out to someone, a friend on the internet, and inspire someone else to do the very same. Um, Ideas Academy is always here for you. This is your home, your safe space, and you can always reach out to anyone if you have anything to share, any ideas to share, any suggestions to make. If you want to you know, come here and be a speaker, um, the stage is always yours. Right, guys? Thank you so much for listening to Dr. Trisha Yeo. Thank you, everyone. And a little bit of me. And we hope that this leaves you with a message. Don't be afraid to go out there to be who you are, to challenge yourself and to take action if that's what you feel like doing. Okay? Bye-bye! Hello. Okay. Thank you so much for this wonderful talk. It was so informative, so fun. And really appreciate that you have taken your time from your busy schedule to come and share with us your experience, your knowledge um, in your particular field. So we would like to present a token of appreciation from Academy for both of you.